Welcome to There Must Be More, a Bethel Ottawa podcast. Remember to like and subscribe on YouTube at Bethel Ottawa and follow us on Apple Podcasts and Spotify Podcasts. Welcome everybody to There Must Be More podcast, the podcast where we wrestle through the human experience through the truth of scripture. Woo. Woo! We are so glad that you are here. Thanks for listening to this episode. We just want to remind you before we get started in today's conversation, make sure you give us a thumbs up and a little like, give us a little star on Apple Podcasts or yeah. Spotify Podcasts and share this with a friend. Yeah. Also, I said podcast instead of pad-cast. podcast. It's a Give it to the podcast. <laughs> right? Okay, cool. So go ahead and do that for us, please. And thank you. It just helps us push the content out. Let me ask you a question. Sure. When you're doing the like intro, where we wrestle yeah. with the human experience through the two script, two, right? <laughs> How do you feel while you're saying it? Do you feel like, I, I, am I saying this right? Or do you, yes. feel like, do you feel like, this is weird. It feels out of control. Like, I don't know if I'm going to be able to finish the sentence. <laughs> no, I just keep thinking, don't mess it up. Don't mess it up. Don't mess it yeah. up. Don't mess it up. <laughs> I yeah. feel like we both have the same energy when we're saying it. It's kind of like, let's get through this. Hopefully I make it yeah, to the yeah, end. Yeah, like, woo! And then, woo, we did it. So then we don't have to worry. I don't have to worry about it until yeah. next time. Did it come across natural, Shan? Yeah. Oh. That Perfect. was a high five. Okay. High five. So witty banter. Yeah, here we are. Another day. I see that I've changed my clothes. You. Yet you, on the other hand, <laughs> you must wear the same thing every Wednesday. So we... <laughs> Recording two episodes in the same day, sir. I didn't have a change of clothes. I do take a shower. I do wash my hair. I do wash my clothes. I do change my clothes. Mm-hmm. So take that. Okay, I will. He just That's has good. an extra change of clothes, I guess. In I just here. had a jacket and I took my <laughs> sweater off and was wearing a shirt. Underneath. Are you wearing a different hat? Or are you just wearing no, it sideways? Same hat. Okay. It wouldn't. It wouldn't even be unreasonable to think that she might have worn the clothes, washed them, and then worn them again a week later. The voice of reason over here. <laughs> wow. Yeah, yeah. You hear no. that? It was just. <laughs> She's a, on my I was, side. I was just trying to bring some brevity and lightness to the. <laughs> but that's fine. Uh, no. <laughs> uh, no, we felt we're filming two today, so that's yes. why I am in the same outfit. So hey, last thanks, last thanks last week's episode um, was for me which we just actually shot a couple hours ago, mm-hmm. but um, pretty deep. And I don't know. I hope, I hope it was helpful to people. Mm. Um, and the interesting thing about it is what, like with the stuff that we're talking about there, it brings out a ton of emotion. Yeah. Right. Definitely. So like full fessing up, like after shooting that, I was just like uh, gamut of emotion. Mm-hmm. Right. Like for me personally, mm-hmm. and it, that sounds weird. Maybe An emotional it's just, crash. It's just like a podcast, right? Like, nah, come on, get over it, Rob. Right. But like, it's like just talking about the difficulties that people face. Yeah. Um, and how to help everyone walk through it and lead through it. And like the whole aspect of, it's really important to be vulnerable Mm -hmm. and like these discussions are not easy. Mm -hmm. Um, yeah, I just think it's important to, to recognize that when we do these deep spiritual, this deep spiritual work and anything that we do, um, we also need brevity and we need lightness and we need like to, to take those things to God and we need to like not run from things because they're hard. And, um, so like when you, if you, if we talk about something and it makes you emotional, um, I just say like, that's okay. Yeah. Engage with it. Like I sit in it. Yeah. And and yeah. Like sit in it because, um, a lot of people aren't having these conversations and it's because they're uncomfortable. And so we say this often on here, but like we are creatures of comfort, yeah. right? We run from something that's uncomfortable, but I think um, like last week's episode is a hard episode, but it's a necessary episode. Great. And just because it's hard doesn't mean we shouldn't do it. Mm-hmm. Um, and I think there's plenty of lessons to learn just in that. But if, yeah, if it made you feel, you know, a certain type of way, yeah. that's okay. Yeah. Feel the feelings, sit with them, and then bring them to God. Exactly. Right? And I think that's just for wherever you are in that discussion, because mm-hmm. there's different levels. Like, yeah, there's, there's so many things we talked about in that. Yeah, there's it people who have experienced things. There's people yeah. who are just angry about things, and mm-hmm. there's people who are worried, and it's just, yeah. you know. And you know what? I'm, like, in, included in all that, the gamut of that spectrum. Like, right. I'm... I trust God and I believe in God and I have like so much hope, but mm-hmm. at the same time, I'm still also very angry about it. And those yeah. two things can absolutely coexist. For sure they can. Yeah. Yeah. And then uh, I think that what we end up talking about today helps us really navigate through those types of things and all of the difficult feelings, right? Mm-hmm. Um, so should we, yeah. should we just start talking? Yeah. Okay. On. So today we want to talk about probably what I would say is the most significant issue in the world today 
for an individual. Mm -hmm. And that is identity. Yeah. Right? Yep. Like no matter what, you have to deal with it. Like no matter what. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Right? Mm -hmm. So um, it's kind of like where do we start here? Um, Here, this is where I want to start. Yep. Sarah, what's your identity? So (laughs) I would say, first off, um, my identity, I identify myself as a daughter of God. Okay. That's my identity. All right. That's like my starting point and my like end point. Does that make sense? Of course. Now. Okay. Let's unpack that. (laughs) Okay. (laughs) Because it's a nice, it's a nice phrase. Yes. Um, and we, we all say those things in church. Yeah. You're a child of God. Yes, you are. Mm -hmm. Okay. Mm -hmm. So you're a daughter of God. Mm -hmm. What does that mean? So that means that no matter what I do mm-hmm. or where I go, mm-hmm. where I work, mm-hmm. what type of work I do, mm-hmm. what kind of person I am, my faults and my flaws, my good parts, my giftings, my talents, um, those don't really mean anything at all to God other than who I am to him and who I am to him is a daughter. Okay. So that's where I go with that. No, that's good. I think that's really important. I think it's important to understand who we are because like, Your view of who God the Father is, is vital. Mm -hmm. And not everybody is able to easily come to the same view of God, the Father, Mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. Um, So as a daughter of God, Mm -hmm. the Father, right? Mm -hmm. How you get in trouble, what's your reaction? He's the Father. Mm -hmm. How do you, what do you do when you get yourself in trouble? Yeah, honestly, I just tell him. And then how do you feel he is in that? I think it's really important. How do you? Um, I feel like he's just waiting for me to like talk to him. Yeah. So if you like, I like picture him on this like picnic bench. Oh, cool. Okay. <laughs> like, so okay. if I have something that I need to like bring to him and maybe I'm like a little bit hesitant mm. Or not, like, I don't picture him, like, looming over me mm-hmm. or, like, angry or annoyed. Like, oh, here we go again. Like, yeah. she did this again. Because oftentimes it's, like, the same thing. I'm like, eat. Hi, me again. Mm-hmm. Uh-oh. Right. All right. Yeah. Um, so I really just have this, like, image of him on a picnic bench. And I literally just, like, he's waiting for me to just slide in to the next spot. Oh. Yeah. It's like. Give him a little bump. And yeah, yeah, like, and hey, just, and dad. Hey, guess what? Hey. Yeah, I, that's kind of like what I got another accident. I, <laughs> yeah, that's like kind of what in. I like. I picture, and it's not always easy, but I know that he's kind of just always there, okay, waiting. Yes. Yeah. Beautiful. Yeah. I love it. So you said, okay, first and foremost, you're a yeah. daughter of God. Yeah. Is that it? Is that all you need? Like, or is like, is there more? Is there like? Um, I mean, you said first, so I'm assuming there's a second. No, like first and last. Oh, yeah. I thought it was a first and foremost. No, sorry, okay. first and last. Like I mean, I could have like, added all of that in yeah, there. Yeah. First and last. So that's it. Yeah, that's all you need. Yeah, that's what I've learned. That's what I need. Crazy. Yeah, I don't need anything else. Amazing. What about you? Mm, I'm probably not as wise as you. Stop. <laughs> so. I don't know if this would be seasonal, mm-hmm. which might sound weird, but I'm, I would more interact with Jesus in all of this. Okay. Mm-hmm. So, um, and I think that's fine. Like, yep. I think it's fine. fine. He's, he's, he's the reason I can go to the father. Yeah, exactly. But he's also very much happy to see me and happy that I would bring whatever I bring to him. Like, like happy because he's like, okay, let's, 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 let's go. Let's fix this. Like, yeah. Right. Yep. Um, and I think that when I sense him and feel him and, and the, what I know about him, he, he's got an authentic me to be. Mm-hmm. Right. Mm-hmm. And so I think my identity has, oh, I think there's a lot of, I can go a million places in my identity, mm-hmm. like a million. Mm-hmm. Um, my identity is how I love my kids. 
Mm. My identity is how I treat my wife. Mm -hmm. My identity is how I'm told to share the gospel. Mm -hmm. My identity is what I show in my ministry to other people that encourages them. My identity is... Uh, I could go on and on, right? Like, my identity is a little bit the children's book I wrote. My identity is a little bit... This is Disney life where Mm -hmm. me and Shannon just act like goofs at Disney. Mm -hmm. Like, those are all a part of that greater identity. Mm -hmm. And I will line up with you in that it's Mm -hmm. all encompassed by Christ as the center. Yeah. Um, But but then I like to, like, sort of hang out in all the... uh, Areas. The benefits of... What my identity looks like? Yeah. Right. Yeah. Does that make sense? Yeah. Okay. Makes a lot of sense. So let's talk about the like the world, and because I don't think our view would probably be across the board. No. Um, (laughs) What do we What do we see in the world when it comes to identity? Um, I I think that our in the world our identity is led by emotion. Okay. Um, Okay. A lot. Yeah. And so like oh like. I feel like this, so I must be this. I feel down about that, so I guess I'm this now. Right. Like, this didn't work out, throw it all away. I'm not like that then. Right? Mm. So I think our emotions really lead into the places of quote-unquote identity, even though those are just aspects of who they are as humans and not necessarily their identity. Wow. So, oh, I'm so sorry to do this. (laughs) But it's what you're saying is so important, I feel. Okay. Can we put some like names into some of that? Sure. Because we're saying like, oh, I didn't this, so I'm not this. Okay. Okay. I didn't what, so I'm not what. Okay. Let me think. Right? <laughs> Let me get like a, a good example. I, this is really like uh, I'm putting her on the spot yeah, here. Yeah, like yeah. it really is. Okay. So let's talk about, I'll use me as an example. Of course. It's the best example. Because... <laughs> wow. Well, because it's personal. Yeah. So for me, before... I let my emotion for sure lead who I thought I was. Okay. 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 Right? I wasn't always like, I'm a daughter of God and that's just who I am. Right? Um, So an example for me would be like, if I failed at something, Mm -hmm. I'm just a failure. Right? Like I'm I'm just not good. Yes. Even though I tried it one time and like flopped. And so then I like want to throw the whole thing away. I might know something about yeah. that. Yeah. Um, another example would be like I just had like a rage blackout. Like I was so angry. <laughs> I was so mad. You would never. Like, listen. Yeah, okay. Uh, anger is like I have to work extra hard on my self-control okay. with anger. Yeah. But the Lord has like done a work and really like did it. I always say Which I'm is like, why I don't I'm Italian, it. so I have like, you know, there's mafia blood in there. So of course there's going to be rage. It sounds like a generational thing. You know? You know what I'm saying? It's just a yeah. mafia. Yeah. So, uh, so let's say I have a rage blackout. I'm so angry. So I'm like, oh gosh, I'm actually like the worst person. <laughs> yeah. So because worst. I'm just angry all the time. The worst. Or my my identity is like I'm just a raging person, and that's just who I am. And the, you're gonna have to deal with that, mm-hmm. right? Like, there's so many different aspects of like I feel this way, so I am this way. Yeah. Or I feel this way, so I'm not this way. Mm-hmm. Right. So I think in the world we see our emotion is really, really dictating what we're doing, who we are, um, and what our identity is. Oof. Okay. Yes. Go ahead. I <clears throat> I think some clarification might be needed. Yeah. Um, what is identity? And like maybe you guys are going to get this. What does that mean? What mm-hmm. is the difference between my identity and my characteristics? What makes up my personality? Mm-hmm. Those kinds of things. Because mm-hmm. I think there can be confusion yep. mm. in what's identity and and what isn't. Okay, yes. so that's yeah. a really great question, Chan. What's identity? I don't know. I'm asking you. Oh, see. <laughs> thought you had she the flipped answer. it on you. I Usually did. you no, do no, that no, to people. No, 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 she flipped no, no. it on you. No, no, no. I want to no. know what you guys think. I did that for a purpose because for me to give you some kind of a definition of mm-hmm. like identity, we could go to the dictionary 100%. Yeah. yeah. Right? But, um, and I would tell you that I believe identity to be the whole you, like who you are in fullness. I would, I would even argue personally that your identity is your authentic self in Christ. Like that's where I would go. Mm -hmm. Um, But that's not necessarily a psychological definition of identity because there's different views on that. Um, 
I mean, a, an example of that becomes when we talk about like gender identity, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. Like, so it, for me personally, I don't see my gender as my identity because yeah. my gender is a part of me. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Um, but there's a my gender does play a role, right? Mm -hmm. Into it's an in, aspect. Yes, but mm -hmm. there's a wholeness to who I am that my gender is a part of. So like that's why I have Christ as the center because He's the one who makes me authentic. So. It's really a coming together of all those things, all the characteristics, and it's how I interact with them at my best that I believe is my real identity, at mm -hmm. least the one that I would strive to move toward. Become, yeah. yeah. I would say identity for me is who I am at the core of my yep. self. Yep. Like who I am when nobody is around, when everything is stripped away from me, like my characteristics, <clears throat> all of that. Who I am at the end of the day, my identity is who I am at my deepest core. Mm -hmm. And so that's why I said, at, at the end of the day, throwing everything off, at, who I am is the da a daughter of God. Yeah, right? no, for sure. That's what identity is to me. So hopefully that I think, I think I th It's really interesting because we have two different perspectives. So I almost want yeah. us to like jostle with that. Okay. Right? Well, and this is why I asked the question because I felt like you guys were both saying different things. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And so like... Yeah. I know I heard your answer. And I was like, should I have had a different answer? No, no, no. no. <laughs> because, no that's, because everybody yeah. that we're talking to... Has a different idea. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. And yeah. so that's what you feel forms your identity is, mm -hmm. is your daughter of God. Mm -hmm. And... Um, uh, but then some other people who view it differently, like these characteristics define my identity mm -hmm. might go, Oh, well then I'm wrong. Like, so I, I think that's why I wanted clarification because you're both really saying the same thing. You just get there in a different, different way. way. Kind yeah. of, but how it plays out in our lives. I feel like that's why I want to like wrestle with it. Okay. We're not like box. Um, <laughs> we're not, we're not. Cause we, we both have the same heart for all of this stuff. Mm -hmm. Now, Hmm. So when, when you give me your description, mm -hmm. I say that I feel limited by uh, one thing that you said, and that's at my deepest core when I'm alone. That's who mm -hmm. I am. And for me, it's like, oh, I might add to my identity there and like other parts of, of who I am might yeah. come out because I'm, I feel a different freedom. Mm -hmm. But like... I when want, you're alone? Yeah. Yeah. But I don't want it to just be that. Like I want to consider my identity when I'm with my wife and I want to consider my yes. identity when I'm uh, on the podcast and when I want, like, yeah. do you know what I mean? Yeah. So like, I just sort of struggle with uh, who I am at the deepest core when I'm alone. Yeah. The alone part, I think, is what I wrestle but with. But when you're alone, aren't you your most honest self? Because you're not, you're not trying maybe. to be somebody in front of somebody else. You're not trying to project maybe what you think people want you to be and maybe it's just my people pleasing tendencies maybe that that kind of give me that view on it because mm -hmm. i feel like when you're by yourself and you're like you don't have any pretenses you're not acting a certain way you're not trying to conduct yourself in a certain manner like you just are who you are kind of it's interesting and this can just be a personality <laughs> thing and yeah. like so it's really important to not I think it's maybe really not important box. for me to tell you what your identity is and you yeah. to tell me what mine is. Cause like everything you said, like I don't disagree with, it's yeah. just, I don't exist that way. Yeah. Like you kind of like, I'm just the same on yeah. my own. If yeah. I am going to break out in song, like I would when I'm alone, <laughs> I'll do yeah. it in front of you. Yeah. And if, I'm not saying I'm different in front of other people than I am by myself. But in a way, you can you can admit that. I you, can admit you that. You threw some things that you threw. People-pleasing tendencies yes. and being my real self in there. Yes. So that's fine. Yeah, like, yeah, yeah. No, but I'm saying I'm not like completely different people. Right, right. No, right? yes. No, and you wouldn't yeah. be. You wouldn't yeah. be. Do you feel attacked? No. Okay. I just wanted to just, I just wanted to clarify. Yeah. <laughs> um, I think it's, it's really good. Interesting. That you, it's really good that you brought it up. I like to think of how I am in all situations as my identity. Yeah. That's kind of like, I love that wholeness. Right. That like the same goofy Rob yeah. who exists on This Is Disney Life yeah. actually needs to be a part of this podcast too. Right? right. And that same goofy Rob who's like, some people can't stand because he's just like, what are you, five, mm -hmm. um, is also a pastor who speaks on Sundays sometimes. Mm -hmm. And that same, like, I don't want to become, I'm not Paul. Yeah, yeah, I actually, yeah. I know it's in scripture, but it's Paul's words. And I'm not down for become all things to all people, like just in this way where I'm not mm -hmm. 
not not uh, not authentically who God made me to yes. be. Like I would never want to trade that. Yeah. And it's the Bible, so I'm going to assume that Paul didn't mean some yeah. kind of weird. But yeah. But oh, I like Paul. a whole. Yeah, I kind of like bringing all of it into this possibility of uh, who the fullness of who I am in my full identity. And that makes sense because you're not just one thing. Like God didn't right. create you to be one thing. God right. didn't create me to be one thing. Mm. Um, and so what you're saying is like my identity is when I'm with my kids, when I'm with my wife. Like that is true. Mm -hmm. And I feel like that's true for me too. Mm. I just always come back to that's who I am at my core. Yeah. Right? Yeah. But I still have all these different facets. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right? Yeah. Um, and I think our identity, I think people get hung up because they think I have to be one thing and one thing only, and that's my identity. Yes. That's not true. Agreed. That's not true. Right. Right? There's so many. They, yeah, there's so many different we things. We actually had that in the notes, Shannon, <laughs> so we completely agree on it. Great. It's not one thing. Great. Yeah, it's not one thing. And. Okay, but. Yeah. For us, it also is. It yeah. is <laughs> and isn't. Yeah. What do you mean? Does that hurt? Does that hurt your brain? <laughs> so, you okay, I have, I have a thought. Mm, uh -oh. Um, like, uh -oh. and gonna... it, and it's no, but it's in line with what you guys are okay. saying. Like, there, are, there are all these different big parts of us mm -hmm. that form our identity, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. So, it can be career can be a part of that. Mm -hmm. Your talents can be a part of that. Your, um, uh, your, uh, like, for me, I'm a mom right? I'm a wife. Mm -hmm. All of these things, I like, I'm a follower of Jesus. All of these things contribute to my identity yeah. Yeah. <clears throat> in wholeness, like you said. Yeah, yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. And yeah. Yeah. And I, I think then it's important to go, okay, but we have that center. Like that's you. Mm -hmm. At my deepest core, I'm a daughter. Mm -hmm. And like when everything else falters, yeah. that's where you can land. Yeah. And like it all burns down. Yeah. And if tomorrow all you have left is you. Yeah you know you're still of tremendous value yes. well, because you're a daughter. Yeah. Because, okay, so you got to think, if we say our career makes up part of our identity, what happens What happens if yes. um, we're in a terrible accident and that ability to fulfill that career is taken from us? Yes. Mm -hmm. Who do we become? Yeah. Exactly. Right, so if, if the I center... Good looks? Like, those things help <laughs> form us because it's part of who we are, right? It's it's, it's I'm just like sidestepping that whole. I know. I know. <laughs> You're we've been married. I didn't even like acknowledge. Ick. The joke. Yeah. Ick. No, Ick. no, not. Ick. <laughs> um, no, but like you, you shouldn't find your identity in your career. It's a part of what forms your identity. Yes. But if your whole identity mm -hmm. is in that, then if it's taken or when you retire, even mm -hmm. Who are you? Who yeah. like if if you're married and your marriage, your spouse is your identity and then something happens, you lose mm -hmm. your spouse for mm -hmm. whatever reason. Mm -hmm. What happens to you? Yeah. So that's why yes, the center of us needs to be rooted in in being daughters and sons of mm -hmm. of Christ. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. 100. I think maybe I haven't been clear about what I mean either. Uh, I don't, or you guys aren't catching on what I'm, what I mean. Cause like we keep going to things and I really don't mean the things yeah. I do not mean the career at all, mm -hmm. except the, who I am in that career. So like, it's like, um, and, and I say the kids, not because I just am a dad, mm -hmm. but it's like who I am with those who kids and for them. Right. Like, so it's like, it's like the, um, the culmination of, uh, my personalities and, uh, what I've wrestled with in my life and my experiences mm -hmm. and all of this being laid down at the cross so that God can make me, you know, the more soft skills, the compassion, yeah. the uh, yeah. self-aware, hopefully, yeah. except for that comment about my looks, um, the, <laughs> you know, all of those things I think are the things that I end up bringing into, like I call them things. Those are the, the, the aspects. Yeah. And the, they're spiritual aspects. Mm -hmm. Those are spiritual aspects that I bring into all the things. Mm -hmm. I bring all of that, and that that wholeness can make me um, thrive in all the or or flounder. So when I hit a tragedy, if I am willing to be um, everything God is going to make me to be, yeah. I can be more than a conqueror, mm -hmm. right? So that means he gives me a courage I didn't know I have. Mm -hmm. It means that he gives me a patience I didn't know I have. He, mm -hmm. he means that... So, like, I love the idea that what you're saying as a child of God uh, means so much more about all of those things. Yeah. All of those areas of life, mm -hmm. all those personality traits, all those 
reactions, emotions, yeah. everything like that. So yeah. I don't know if that helped my cause in any way, mm-hmm. but I don't necessarily equate a job. It's more, who am I in that job? Right. What do I bring? Okay, what so, do I bring? Yeah, so what led you to have that kind of thinking towards identity then? Oh, I'm so sorry for this. I like something called deep work. <laughs> <laughs> yes, we are aware of this, Rob. If you're a listener, you are also aware. There's a lot of nuance yeah. in deep work. <laughs> oh man, this is this is dripping. I'm sorry. Oh, right, I'm just using all my all of my platitudes. They're not though. Um, I think what led me to this mm-hmm. is deconstructing and reconstructing a bajillion times all the time. Okay, deconstructing what? All things that I think I know. Like what? Like. <laughs> Uh, how I interpret scripture. Okay. Right? Interesting. Um, what I know about scripture. Mm-hmm. Like, what do people know about our Bible? Yeah. Um, how I interact with it. Um, okay, so let's put that stuff aside. Deconstructing um, my own struggles. How I handle struggles. Yeah. There's a big one, yeah. right? Uh, I'm always... Oh, I just hate when I talk about this. I feel like I sound so arrogant. Like I've just found those holy place where I'm no, the one no, who no, sits no, and no. thinks about all the wrong things and blah, blah. <laughs> um, <laughs> but actually, so okay. I did a test once and it, it, sh- it talked about kind of like what kind of spirituality you had. And mm-hmm. mine was just this significantly high. And it was like... I, I was not evangel like I was not an evangelist. I was not mm-hmm. a I was not a preacher. I was not a this or I was like really nothing except heightenedly aware of my sin. Okay. <laughs> and yeah. like it's wow. just such a weird thing. Like yeah, that's yeah. like we the don't only, really hear people talking about that. No, it was yeah. like the only spiritual gift or I don't remember mm-hmm. what it was, but it was the only thing that I really I had. Take that test. It was the, I don't remember what it was, but it was in Bible school. <sighs> Too bad. Um, I want to know. But it's like the only thing I was good at was being okay. really aware of my sin, and that can sound like odd. Sad. It can. Yeah, I'd be like, are you okay? Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Like, are you depressed? Yeah. Like, what's going on? Yeah. But it helps me to to to, to ponder all the things mm. and wrestle with all the things mm-hmm. and un- try to understand where my heart is at with all the things. Um, and so it's been, I've come to understand a lot more of the fullness through experiencing a very full spiritual life. Like, yeah. I don't just go to church on Sunday. Um, Mm -hmm. and part of that's because I'm a pastor. Okay, fine. Uh, but I don't just take what somebody preaches to me at face value because they preached it or because they come from some denomination or anything like that. Yes. Um, and so I just sort of put everything that I experience in the Christian realm somewhat under a microscope. And I ask the Lord, like, first of all, where am I off base? Mm. Um, where do I need to be better? Mm-hmm. I think we all should start there. Where do I need to be better? Not yep. where, where does everybody else need to be better? Yes. Yeah. Um, yeah. And, and, and so it's still an ongoing process. Like I might get to a different place of this understanding of identity and mm-hmm. hopefully it's even more rich and more full than I feel right now, or maybe it needs to be corrected in some way. That's fine. Right. Yeah. But, um, yeah, that's kind of been my process. Yeah. It's deconstructing and reconstructing and yeah. people don't like that word necessarily, but mm. yeah. I don't that's like de- I don't like deconstructing for the purpose of destroying. Yeah. Right. Yep. You re- you deconstruct to rebuild. And I just and I just tear down in a sense of like maybe it's more like uh, getting in and trying to tinker not tinker with even just like let's get into the nuts and bolts of it and what's actually happening mm. at the depth of what you're experiencing. Yeah. Okay. Uh, sorry. That's good. No. Yeah, that's, I was that was a tough answer. It's a hard question because I think people are listening and they think like. I don't even know where to begin. Like, with identity? With identity, okay. right? Like, yes. how do I not let my emotion you know, lead me? How do I, like, what, if I'm not letting my emotion lead me, what am I letting lead my identity then? Okay, and I think, let's do this, because, mm-hmm. like, maybe I'm not the person to follow on this. Okay. Maybe, maybe I'm the person who's going to sit and ponder it more than anybody else. Yeah. But maybe I'm not the one to follow, because you come to a very nice, succinct answer that you're really empowered by. Mm-hmm. So how did you get there? Um, well, therapy. 
<laughs> a lot of therapy. Ooh. You like that? Can you just write that? Yeah. Yep. Classic. Just, just Instant jingle. classic. Instant classic. Um, no, honestly, I, yeah, therapy for sure helped me kind of like flesh out, flush out, whatever you want to say. Yeah. Um, a lot of my, I guess, <laughs> a lot of my questions that I had surrounding identity, because like, here's the thing, I grew up in church, but I wasn't taught about my identity in church. It was just like, you're chosen, you're loved, you're called, he knit you together in your mother's womb, like all the things we hear, which like, nice and true, but how do I, how do I get my identity out of that? Right. And so I heard that my entire life and like identity is so important. You need to know who you are in Christ. And it's like, well, how do I like, thank you. How do I do that? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And there was no what does that mean? explanation. Um, so I think honestly having, um, having the chance to like talk about that through therapy mm -hmm. and also seeing like what, um, other aspects of my life, whether that's trauma or joy or hardships or resilience or whatever I walk through that impacts how you view yourself and your identity. Mm -hmm. And it also impacts how you view, view God. Right. Um, and so I had to, I mean, not to sound annoying, but I also had to do deep work. <laughs> that was a really loaded like, way to say that. Not no, because you <laughs> not to you, sound like some bozo. Not to sound like Rob over but here, but I, like, I gotta do deep work. <laughs> <laughs> it's fair. Also, who says bozo? <laughs> just kick me when I'm down. <laughs> kick me when I'm down. He no, says it just, all the time. It's been no, I, don't. You do. I have not heard that in a, a long probably the last time I heard that was like on a 90s sitcom. I'm not gonna lie, like Full House or something. I didn't even watch those. <laughs> I thought they were trash. Well, Full House is good, so so watch your mouth. It was not so <laughs> um so I had to look at all the aspects of my life and kind of like you said this. <laughs> I'm sorry. Did I say something wrong? No, I just couldn't get over how I ha now had to be serious oh. after that whole thing. So, okay. <laughs> sorry. I really jumped. Oh, go. Um, you said this because you said, who, like, what's my identity? My identity is when I'm with my kids. My identity is who I am with my wife. My identity is da, da, da. So I had to look at what was my identity in all of those things. Mm -hmm. So everything that I walked through, all my hardships, all my, like, addictions, all of my things, like, what was my identity through all of that? Well, it, it always came back to, well, I'm a daughter. Uh huh. I love that. So I had to like, and I honestly, it's hard because I sat with my therapist and she made me go back and write in my notebook every single memory I had in my like childhood. So I had to do it in like zero to five year increments and then five to 10 years and then 10 to 15. Like it's when I say deep work, that's what yeah. she was making me do. Right. Good. And so in every scenario I then had, she would then say like, what was your identity in that? How did you feel in that? How did you, and that's how I got my identity. And I think that's important because those, those Sarah's exist still, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. especially at points of like hurt. Yep. I don't want to use the trauma word because yeah. that's very... No, and her. And then some, like, in certain situations, like, I could see, like, my five-year-old Sarah is, like, trying to come out. Yes. Right? And they're like, oh. Yeah, like, whoa. bullied Sarah or mm -hmm. that that time you were told, like, you are this way. Yeah. You just talk too You're much. Too or, loud. Well, yeah. She gives way too many That hugs. triggers me. Way too and many If someone hugs. tells me, I once was, like, talking to this guy... <laughs> oh no. Talking him up? <laughs> no, we were, oh. like, you were just, like, you know, we weren't dating, but we were talking. And... He says something, and so I always was told, like, my personality is too big. My personality is too big. Like, your laugh is too loud. Like, you're too loud. You're too loud. That's Anyways, he said to me once, you're too loud. Let me tell you, the way I flipped a switch on that guy. Yeah, yeah, good. <laughs> because my, like, seven, this, like 10-year-old came out mm. and was like, how dare you? And then, you know, my rage blackouts. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But, yeah. so. And that's when you said, and you're ugly, but I can be quieter. <laughs> And I could fix that, but yeah. what are you going to fix yeah, that? I'm just kidding. No. You would never do <laughs> right? that. That's no. not I, no, okay, I, no, so that, I would never do but that. But that exists. No, no, no. And, and then that becomes yeah. a part of an identity that you can create for yes. yourself. Yes. Mm -hmm. So I had to look at through all those things that informed who I am. What was my identity in 
it at the end of the day. Interesting. So that's okay. how that's how I got to it. I I really hope that made sense because we really it did. went I all over the place. Far I'm too so often, sorry, but yeah. Wow, and I, I love. Okay, so I love our perspectives the way they are, and I think. Well, I actually think that there's probably ninety five percent of the people would latch on to what you sort of describe as. Do I have something on my nose? You're just doing this to me. No, my nose was itchy. My <laughs> nose was itchy, but I was trying not to make it obvious. And then you were like, is there something on my okay. nose? Listen, listen, listen. This we're is getting off the rails. Yeah, we are. Um, <laughs> okay. <laughs> it just so kept so going so and you kept looking at me. <laughs> okay. I think we can cut that out if we need to. I'm tired. The <laughs> thing that I think is that 95% of people could probably sink into what you're saying because where you end up in is almost like a position of rest with your with your um description of your identity. Hmm. So you can rest ah. in I'm a daughter of God. Yes, right? exactly. Okay. I've never worded it like that. Yeah, and I love that. I love that. It's kind of not how my brain works, <laughs> okay. which is fine. Yes. Um I probably need some of that. <laughs> but mine is more of a like um the way I would describe it is like a adventurous sort of like I see all the possibilities. Of, You're of, calling me boring. Oh my god! I'm just kidding. <laughs> I'm just kidding. No, it's, no this makes it's, sense. It's like for a you. wider this, view. Yeah. So like, I get excited. Yeah. I get excited about all the different ways that my identity shows up. Yeah. So we just sort of view it differently. Yep. Mine's way harder to follow because it's my brain. No, but I understand what you're saying. Yeah. And somebody else out there is going to have a brain like mine. Who's yeah. Like, huh. No, I understand what you're saying, and I like what you're saying because it it. Um, reiterates what we said is we're not just one thing. No, no. Right? We're not just one yeah. thing. N- not at all. Yeah. Um, I think really important stuff that you addressed in what you were talking about is um, the the aspects of how we create our own identity. Mm-hmm. So in the world right now, let's hit some of those things because, okay, first let me ask this. In the world, do people see their identity through one thing mostly? This is the thing that makes my identity. I don't think so. No, I think m- mm. I think more than maybe. Yeah, maybe. I think people. Let's name a few. My job. Job. I think gender. Yeah. Right. Yeah. I think um, f- uh, your finances, <laughs> yeah. your money, your wealth. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, your relationships. Yeah, marriages, my, my creative output, whatever. or yep. who I am in the creative world. Yeah, um, um, who I fame. am on social media, popularity. Yeah, the yeah, likes all. I'm getting, the follows I'm getting, is my clip going viral? Um, yeah, your job. All so like, I think that even if it isn't just one thing, and we would, and I think like mothers and fathers too, they put their whole identity oh, in being a father or being a mother. And, and why then your kids leave the nest and then what? Do exactly, you do? exactly. Like, who are you don't you? know what who do you to like? be. Yep. Like. And I think we have that in so many aspects. And yeah. we look at like retirement. Retirement's like killing people. My God. Did you know that? Like retirement is not, I did not know that. good for people's health, right? Because but, they don't feel like they have any, some sort of... Uh, well, and because they wrapped it up in this one thing, yeah. now they got nothing to do. Right. Once their it, job is done, what am I... What do I do? Right. So a lot of people sit and eat, yeah, get old and die. Like So like, and purpose oh gets kind of lost yeah. and like what I want to be able to do is find purpose all over the place. Mm-hmm. Like sort of everywhere I go, yeah. everything I'm a part of, there, there can be purpose. And I I think that um, it's really important that we be able to talk about identity in Christ uh, because it has to be true, mm-hmm. but we also have to know what we mean when we say it because like exactly what you said, it, mm-hmm. like it... it it's that whole platitude area, like your identity is in Christ. And if somebody doesn't know what to do with that, they throw it in the garbage. Yeah, exactly. And I'll move on. Yeah, because it just sounds like such a Christian thing to say. It so does. It's, and it's hard to latch on to mm-hmm. because you're like, cool, that's nice. What does that mean? Yeah. And then people don't explain what it means. And, and so this part of the aspect of what we end up doing is, as Christians and churches and mm-hmm. Uh, is that we we put expectations on people to know their identity almost before they come. Like we would use language often like uh, get yourself cleaned up to and then come to church and then we'll accept you kind of stuff. I hate that. But yeah, I, I hate it too. But I think it's even deeper than that where we, yeah. we almost like put it on people to know their identity 
or to mm. even know that their identity would or should change in some way, or to even let them know that what they're stepping into, um, Christ wants to be a part of that. Hmm. Okay. Mm -hmm. So like for me with anybody who is chasing after Jesus, and this is my view and only my view. Okay. Yep. So (laughs) you can... Think whatever you want about so me. So haters, for, no, off. no, really. Like I, this is what God's put on my heart, um, yeah. and it's going to be for because He's over the years not told me anything differently, right? And I don't believe I have gone off on some horrible path that no, has no, led no. Him to me no. to not hear Him. Okay, no. I believe that it is my job to love. Yes, I think that's what Jesus showed me. Mm-hmm. Um, if somebody comes in to me, whatever their situation, I don't care the situation. Yep. I'm going to say, do you want to follow Jesus? Mm -hmm. And if they go, I do want to follow Jesus. Okay. Um, We're going to have a moment where we, you know, you you pray and you might lift sin there and all that kind of stuff. And that's what we want. You want to repent Mm -hmm. and like, sure. But even if you didn't, if you want to like find out what Jesus, I'm still going to walk you through. Like I'm just going to walk with you. I want you to discover Jesus. I want you to discover who Jesus is. Yeah. And then say you get to a moment of repentance and I accept Jesus into my heart, but like, you haven't told me all the different areas that you're going to repent of mm-hmm. and, and you haven't, maybe this one area, you, you actually still don't believe it's a sin. And, yeah. and maybe I do. Yeah. I don't abandon you there. Yes. Right. I don't, I don't, I don't stop and go, Oh, oh forget ah, it. well, that's the thing. Yeah. You're, you're not showing me a heart that actually wants to follow Jesus. Mm. Right. Mm-hmm. But what I do teach them is that, okay, when you do give your life to Jesus, he's going to tell you, who you are, mm-hmm. and then you have to be obedient to that. So, like, I even can't, I can't tell you that. Yep. No. Right? Yep. I'm going to walk with you in love. Yep. And I don't have an expectation on you. Mm-hmm. Um, and, and, and But I do believe that the Holy Spirit has the power to, Absolutely. and the Word will tell you, and yep. all those things. Yep. yep. And I do that because, I, and the argument right off the bat for me in that, mm-hmm. in this, like, walk with somebody who's going to try and figure out who their identity is in Christ. The argument would be initially, I foresee, oh, well, if you don't tell them their sin, you're just leading them to hell. Mm. Right. Okay. Would you agree that people say that? Yes. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Now they say that. My argument to that is, but if I set up a barrier right off the bat that automatically means they will never find Jesus because I've told them that all their worth is only uh, bound for hell. Mm-hmm. You know, if, if I'm coming out, you're a sinner who's destined for hell. Yeah, if you're coming out swinging like that, right? why would they listen to you? Or if I say uh, a year in, uh, well, you're not showing me enough change, mm-hmm. so you're obviously not serious about Jesus, then I'm setting up a barrier that's going to make it even more of an issue. Mm-hmm. Do I trust God will convict hearts? Mm-hmm. Yes. I do. Absolutely. I do. Trust that the power of the Holy Spirit yeah. will convict hearts. And if I spend a whole lifetime with somebody and I still think that they're off on something, like I, I just, I'm going to tell them what I think when they ask. Yes. And I'm going to be honest. Yes. Yeah. But if somebody's still off, yeah. I don't want to be the person who ever gets in the way of that. And mm-hmm. if that means that at the very last second, they are able to recognize something and, mm-hmm. and repent of it right before mm-hmm. they were to go be with Jesus, mm-hmm. I feel like I've done the right thing. Yeah. Like I I don't feel bad about loving people as well as I am made to love them. Right. And not getting in the way right. of their possible relationship with Jesus. Absolutely. Absolutely. We're not the judge. We're not the judge. Mm. And we're, we don't bring the conviction. Holy Spirit does that. Mm-hmm. Right? We are called to love, like mm-hmm. you said. That's good. Uh, yeah, I mean, I, I probably went far too long on that, but no, I think I, I think that it comes into identity because we're trying to teach people about identity, and then mm-hmm. we tell them right off the bat the identity that they're supposed to have, mm-hmm. and it's usually around an issue or two or or, or a sin or mm-hmm. whatever. And it's like I mm-hmm. want you to discover Jesus so yeah. He can show you your identity. Yeah. Yes. Exactly. Exactly. That's okay. really good. Okay. So mm-hmm. when we talk about identity in Jesus, then. So how do we do that? What does it mean to find our identity in Jesus then? It? Yep. I, I just went on <laughs> and on and Oh, it's on. good. This is good. I think you could answer your own question. Well, you got to go. No. No, <laughs> Me? you. Me? Okay. <laughs> um, I think when we talk about um, identity in Jesus, it's really much simpler than we make it to be. Okay. I think we think like it's like, 
this big, huge, um, like mountain that we need to climb up when actually like scripture is very clear Mm. about who we are in Jesus, um, and what he did for us. And so him dying on the cross was him calling us his and him saying he wants to be close to us. Mm -hmm. And so really that's our identity. Our identity is in Jesus at the cross Mm -hmm. and him resurrecting. Yeah. Right? Yeah, should we say that scripture? Yeah. That we, right? Go it's like it. uh, 2 Corinthians 5.21, for God made Christ, who never sinned, to be the offering for our sin, so that we could be made right with God through Christ. Right. So our identity is we are made right with God, and now we are His, mm-hmm. and we walk with Him. Mm-hmm. That's our identity. Yeah. That's who we are. Beautiful. Right? Yeah. And then everything else flows out of that. Yeah. Right, who you are as a father, who you are as a husband, who you are as a friend, who you are as a coworker, who mm-hmm. are, like all the things flows out of then that identity of Jesus, who he is. Yeah. Right. And so the way I envision it is that's like the starting point. Mm-hmm. Yes. Right. Yeah. Um, believe. Yeah. Right. Believe. Yeah. Believe. Yeah. So you're saved. Mm-hmm. So your identity is that you're that Jesus died for you. Okay. Um. And then you said all of it flows out. I think there's a key word mm. into all that flows out. Mm. And that key word is obedience. Mm. Right? Mm-hmm. Oh, and can I put another one in there? Yeah. Intimacy. Yeah. Intimacy and obedience. You have to be in a position to hear from God. Yeah. Right? That looks like, oh, looks like read your Bible, pray every day, and you'll grow, grow, grow. But no, it, like, it, looks it, like, it looks like read your Bible, but it's it looks like read your Bible and ask the Holy Spirit to speak to you. Yeah. Um, because you're not going to be obedient otherwise. Right. Because you're going to have no idea what he's saying. And it's that connection. How of, are you going to be is that con- obedient without the intimacy? Right. It's right. That connection. You right. can't just be obedient. Don't be obedient to your pastor. Yeah. Right? Yes. Be obedient to what God tells you, and he tells you through his word, and he can tell you through a pastor. Yeah, absolutely. But you need that intimacy with God so that you can know when a pastor is right or wrong. So yep. like... We know that there's people out there teaching things that are wonk. Yeah. Wonky. Yep. Yeah. <laughs> um, what? Wonk. Wonk. Key. Wonky. That was very clear. Uh, <laughs> uh, but uh, it's, the, it's the connection with the Holy Spirit that will uh, lead us to the proper places of that outgrowth, that outpouring that yeah. you're talking about, right? Like yeah. that everything flows out of that. Yeah, exactly. And into that, honestly, that robust sort yeah. of... All the new and, and maybe of that. it's just that I love the joy in my own life <laughs> of uh, seeing that intimacy. And so when I think of that outpouring as my yeah. identity, yeah. it's like that intimacy with God. Right? Yeah. Like that's, I see that big picture. Yeah. Beautiful. You, uh, yeah. I mean, you kind of nailed it with what does it mean? Mm. I, I, it's, Nothing to it, add. It's the cross. <laughs> Yeah. It's, well, no, I added. I added obedience and intimacy. Yeah. Because yeah. there's that fullness that we need to get to. Um, how do we? I mean, how do we teach that? How do we show that? How do we? How do we do that humbly? Like, it's, I just run into so many places where we struggle with that, mm. right? Because we just want to label things and name things and this mm-hmm. is right and this is wrong and there's no gray areas and there's no nuance and there's no mm-hmm. anything. And like, like literally, I, I, how, do, how do we do that? Somebody hears what I said and how I handle somebody and love mm-hmm. to show them their identity and they go, oh, that's so wrong, mm-hmm. right? Like, how do we do this? How do we do this with so many different people, different ideas and different motives and different motivations and... Mm. I think it all goes back to that intimacy part because um, the Lord will convict you. So like the Lord has convicted you Mm -hmm. on how you feel to deal with that. The Lord will convict me on how I feel to deal with that, Mm -hmm. which is similar to you. Um, Somebody else who's listening to that, the Lord will convict them in a different way. Yeah. Right. And that's okay. As long as they keep that intimacy there and as long as they know what their identity is. And um, like you said, like, what does the word say? Mm -hmm. Right? Like, things should be lining up with the word. If they're not lining up with the word, that's probably not it. Yeah. Because God wouldn't ask you to do something that doesn't line up with what he's already said. Yeah. And did and shown and Mm -hmm. put forward. Mm -hmm. Right? Um, 
So we can't be responsible for everybody. No, you can't. Right? No. Nope. You're responsible for you. And yeah. I think that's the best way that we could do that, I think. I think if we could also just get an extra helping of mercy somewhere. Mm. Like something that I was walking today just in the church, and I don't know if it was God or probably, but like this, he gave me this notion, like maybe give people the benefit of the doubt. And immediately I say that when we go to the, oh, the evil stuff people do. Don't give them the benefit. And it's like, but, you know, this is this kind of interesting thing. If I look at two sides of an issue, say, I don't know, we'll just call it the left and the right. Yep. Um, And all the differing issues. When people have these very, very different issues, they often aren't trying to destroy the other side. They're actually trying to do what they believe is right and good and helpful for, for all people. Yeah. Right. Yeah, and yeah. so their differences are actually very often, often, I can't say always, yeah. they're often in this Rude like in the same I want I, I want outcome. what's right or good. Yeah. yeah. Right? Yeah. And we express them in obviously very yes, difficult, very horrible, difficult. whatever yeah. ways very, very sometimes. <laughs> yeah. But if we could give people the benefit of the doubt, um, and that's just when it comes to people trying to figure out their identity in Christ. Like, can we give mm-hmm. people the benefit of the doubt? Mm-hmm. Can we hope for people? Can yeah. we be patient with people? Mm-hmm. Can we, you know, they're... Can we remember who they are to God? Mm-hmm. Can we remember what their identity is to God? Because mm-hmm. I think when we put their I- that identity onto them, we should behave much better when yeah. we remember who they are and, in Christ. And what we've needed. Yeah. Like... L- Absolutely. Right? Yep. Um, so I actually think that we're called to help people find that sort of authentic, fully authentic mm-hmm. identity, that, that safe place. Like you, I agree. you, mm-hmm. that deep, I'm a daughter, I'm mm-hmm. a son, I'm a child of God. Mm-hmm. Um, and then maybe the stuff that I'm excited about is helping them walk that out. Yeah. You know? Yeah. Right. Yep. You can only do that like Jesus did. And Jesus only ever had grace and mercy. Yeah. I'd, I'd point to me to a time where he was condemning, mm-hmm. name calling, um, and vicious. Mm-hmm. Yep. Right? It doesn't exist, Marcus. except mm, the only time I even got n- kind of close mm-hmm. is when he was talking to people like me and you mm-hmm. who were in ministry mm-hmm. or, you know, Pharisees, yeah. Right? Yeah. So, Yeet. yep. I don't know. Yeah. Identity is always going to be a massive issue mm-hmm. because it's the core of who we are. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And like, who do you want to be at the core of who you are? Yeah. Everybody wants to be something great. Of course. And God wants you to be great. Yeah. Right? Which is cool. He wants those things for you, yeah. which is beautiful. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Anything else that we would need to say? Is there any like application points? Yeah, I would just say um, if you really are stuck and you think like, I have no idea who I am, Mm -hmm. I would find one or two people that you are really close with, Mm -hmm. that you trust, that know you Mm -hmm. like well. And I would say, hey, I'm trying to just figure out who God is calling me to be at my very core. Mm -hmm. And so like, what do you... Like, can you pray with me? And what do you feel like God is kind of calling me to be? Mm-hmm. Like, what's my identity? Yeah. I would bring people in with it yeah, because sure. it, it doesn't, don't feel isolated about yeah. it. Yeah. Right. That's yeah. what I would, that's what I would suggest. Yeah. I think um, if you can, I'm going to put this out to anybody who might not even have a relationship with the Lord. Mm-hmm. Right. Um, I would say try. Just, just, just sort of try them, you know, talk to them, like mm-hmm. throw, throw them a word. Mm-hmm. Um, and then, and then look for how he interacts first. Mm-hmm. Right. Mm-hmm. Um, he's not going to, he's not going to run from you if you're uncertain of things. Yeah. He's not going to hide from you. He's not mad Aww. at you. Um, he's not anything except in, in love with you. Like he loves you. Yeah. He, he looks at you and goes, this is like my beloved. Mm-hmm. Um, and then just try to let him speak to the deepest places in your life. Mm. 
the key to that becomes if you really want to chase after him is to do what he tells you to do. And it won't always be easy. Yeah. Like it really won't. No. Sometimes we Obedience have to. Obedience is hard. Sometimes we have to give up things we don't want to give up. Yep. Right? Yep. Yep. Um, but I promise you that whatever he tells you, wherever he leads you, you're going to find a fullness of identity. You're going to mm-hmm. find a much richer ability to just be free. It's like it, it, the all the weights can lift off and like, and it's maybe not in a moment, but in a lifetime, like, oh, it's, but he will not let you down. Yeah. He yeah. will not let you down. If you obey what he tells you to do, he's not going to let you down. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. That's good. Okay. Mm-hmm. I think that's, that, that's all we need to say yeah. on this for today. So thank you for listening. Thank you for being a part of this. Um, yeah, if you want to, Add to the conversation, go into Please the comments yeah. and, and, and let's talk about um, who God really kind of wants us to be and mm-hmm. who we can believe each other to be. And live that out. Yeah. And live it out. All good. Live and five, give us five stars. Yeah. And thumbs up. <laughs> yep. Cool. <laughs> thanks. All right. Thanks. <laughs> Thank you for listening to There Must Be More Podcast, a production of Bethel, Ottawa. You can catch us on YouTube where we would love it if you liked and subscribed. You can also catch us on Apple Podcasts and Spotify.